2024 has kind of sucked in terms of finding top reads for me, but these books haven't sucked, so there's that. welcome back to my channel and I'm here today to talk about some of my favorite reads so far this year. I really haven't been doing reading wrap-ups. I think I've only done one this year just because I really haven't had a lot of favorite reads this year. I've had a lot of three, three and a half star and I just don't really care to sit down and ramble on about 15 books that I thought were meh for the month. So I'm going to try to get back into reading wrap-ups for uh, next month because September has been pretty good so far. But anyways, I am here to talk about just these small handful that have been hitting really hard for me this year. So the first one I have was a duet that I read back in June and that is the Lunamare duet by Pepper Winters. And I picked this up solely because this was the Mystic Box edition that I had gotten around this time in the mail. I thought it was absolutely stunning and gorgeous, gave off summer vibes, so I picked it up immediately and did not regret it. I'm going to set that down because they're kind of heavy and I'll put up the KU cover. But this is one of those stories where you need to go in blind, but I'm going to give you the premise, the setup, but the rest is just, it's, it's one of those true love conquers all type of stories. But basically, we have Aslan and Nirida, and this story takes place in Australia, and in the prologue in the setup, we have a 16-year-old Aslan, and he and his family are fleeing from their country of Turkey. You don't know why. All you know is that they have to get out of there. It's a life-or-death situation. They're undocumented, but you'll find out later in the story why they had to leave, and they take a boat. Well, when they're out at sea, there's a storm. The boat gets shipwrecked and Aslan gets stranded out in the middle of the ocean and, then, and ends up losing his family. Nerida is 12 at this time and her parents are marine biologists. They are out at sea on their boat studying the marine life and they happen to see him, grab him, and rescue him. They end up taking him into their family, giving him a second chance at a life, remembering that he is undocumented so there's a lot that's going to go on with that. You're going to get their entire story. Now, the story is kind of told in two different perspectives. You have like the current present, which is like you have an elderly Nerida and she is telling her story to some journalists that are interviewing her in the future. She has accomplished some awards. She's become really, really successful. And so she is going back and she is telling her love story and how she got to where she is. So then when you go in the past, then you'll jump back and forth between the POVs of her and Aslan. And like I said, this was just an incredible duet. It was Love Conquers All. I really, really loved the setting and I loved the vibes. It just, it was a great summer read, but you can read it any time of year. It just, it was a great tearjerker. It was very angsty. I just really don't know what else to say. This is definitely going to probably go in my top reads of the year. Cause like I said, I haven't had a whole lot of top reads and I just, I'm, I still think about this book. So if any of that intrigued you, go check out that duet. It's great. All right, this next one, I do have an entire spoiler and non-spoiler review, so I won't talk too much about it, but we have Five Brothers by Penelope Douglas. Now, I love Penelope Douglas. I credit them to why I love dark romances so much. Their books were kind of the first ones that I dipped my toe into with the dark romance genre, and then I just never went back. But I absolutely loved this book. Penelope themselves actually sent me an arc and so that was special in itself. But anyway, let's just talk about this book. So this is kind of Credence-esque in the sense that we have one female main character, multiple male love interests. She's going to explore her romantic options with all of them, but she's only going to end up with one of them at the end. So we have Christian and the five Jagger brothers. So this is a spinoff to Tristix Venom. You do not need to read that book prior to this, but I do recommend it just because it's a great book in itself and it has a great setup with the world, the family, all of that. So Olivia from that book, it's her five brothers. Their parents died when they were younger and so it's just been her and her siblings, them against the world. And then her girlfriend, Clay, 
Clay's best friend Christian is the female main character in this book. So this story is the very beginning of the fall. It's right after senior year. So all of Christian's friends have gone off to college and moved on with the next phase of their life. She decided not to go to college. So she's just stuck at home trying to decide what she's gonna do. While this is all going on, her parents are in the middle of a nasty divorce and her mom desperately wants to secure their financial future. And so she kind of has Christian lined up to marry a 32 year old guy that will pay the bills and ensure that they can keep this wealthy lifestyle. Now, obviously, Christian being 18 and a recent high school grad has no desires for any of this, so she tries to avoid it as best as she can. And by doing that, she goes over the town line to like the wrong side of the tracks, the swamp areas, whatever, and that is where the Jagger brothers live. Now, when all of her friends had gone off to college, she started hanging out with the brothers because it was Olivia's girlfriend's family and one of them is her age and that is Trace and at the very beginning of the story you get the sense that they have a they have a friends with benefits relationship they like to hook up for fun and stuff like that and I will say in true Penelope fashion they really set this book up in chapter one for where you're going and so I will kind of just give you the gist of chapter one basically after Christian hooks up with Trace they go back to his place and after a series of events, she doesn't want to go cuddle with him in his bed. She ends up on the couch. One of the brothers approaches her in the dark. They hook up and then she doesn't know which one it is. So in this book, while she is hanging out with all the brothers, figuring out her future, exploring her options, she's also trying to figure out who the mystery brother was that she hooked up with. So I really, really liked this. Also, like I said, this takes place in the fall. We have Thanksgiving going on, so it actually is kind of good for this time of year. It was just a fun, great Penelope read. All right, and then the next one is Man On by Rebecca Wraith, Wrath. Sorry if I butchered that. So I read this back in August as part of a summer Olympic reading vlog because I wanted to read sports romances specifically that tied with the Olympics. And this was a soccer romance that popped up and it was an MM and I needed an MM to read at the time just because I was really slacking in that area. And I really liked this story. So I'm going to start off by saying that if you're just looking for pure MM smut, Yes, this has it, but it also has a lot of trauma and dark themes. So we have our two main characters, Noah and Lane. And first of all, they are stepbrothers. So this is a forbidden romance and it is a college soccer romance. So what makes this story interesting is that Noah was raised by his dad and his stepmom. And his stepmom did not have custody of her son at the time. So when the boys are about 14, I think, Lane ends up coming into their family fold and he's very, very closed off. He's very religious. He, he was raised by his grandfather and you, and as you get further into the book, you learn more about his trauma and what was actually going on. He was actually raised in a huge Christian cult that got shut down by the FBI and was in a lot of trouble. And so he's just battling all of this. And, you know, he was raised to be homophobic, but he's also realizing that he has feelings for his stepbrother, Noah. And then Noah was an interesting character as well, because Noah was always able to notice that Lane was watching him and noticing him. And he would give him crap for it when they were younger. And it got to a point where he realized that Lane needed to release his tension and Noah would basically bully him and taunt him into doing it behind closed doors but it would make him feel better and then they would realize that they had feelings for each other but I really liked this story like I said it has a lot of trauma to it a lot of religious trauma so if you don't like those kinds of stories probably don't pick this up but if you do and you want a little bit more with your smut like I said this was a great story and then we have Rally by Debbie Perry this is the third book in the Treasure State Wildcats series this just came out last month Debbie Perry has just been like throwing books at us like crazy this year and I think we still have two more releases this year I could be wrong I don't know but anyway I really enjoyed this story so like I said this is the third book 
This is the third book in the Treasure's Day Wildcat series, and this is going to be an accidental pregnancy. Now, I know a lot of people do not like this trope, but you know what? This book was really, really good. So we have our two main characters, Rush and Faye, and they meet at the very end of the summer. Rush is camping, and Faye is headed into town to figure out what she's going to do because she kind of has a homeless situation while also living with an ex-boyfriend. They have an instant attraction with each other, and they do end up hanging out that night, but they don't hook up. Rush has a really clingy girlfriend at the time and he ends up breaking up with her that night just because he's had enough. And then after this night of them hanging out and getting to know each other, then you flash forward a month later and then he actually sees her again one night at the local bar and then that is when they have a one night stand so obviously she is going to end up pregnant and they are going to have to navigate this during the football season he is the quarterback he is set to go pro he's like the hottest thing to look at and like i said she is homeless well she's kind of homeless she lives with an ex-boyfriend who's giving her a really hard time keeps raising her rent giving her hard reasons to stay there um she works in a local small diner that's also struggling she's just struggling overall and so when she meets rush obviously he's perfect and when he finds out about the pregnancy he handles it in a great way he moves her in all of that it's just it's a great small town romance it's a great football romance it was just great okay and then i have the lighter and weightless duet now i also read this back in my summer olympics vlog um i'm gonna start by saying i really enjoyed this these were both like 300 and some pages so they were really really quick and easy reads but they were very angsty tear jerkers and i'm going to say they reminded me a bit of the binding and keeping 13 duet so if you have been looking for something similar to that i would definitely go pick up this story so we have our female main character, Sophie, and Sophie actually reminded me of a mixture of Shannon and Johnny. Shannon, because she comes from an abusive household, she has a father that talks down to her, treats her like crap, all of that. But like Johnny, she is also a very skilled athlete and she's very, very determined to make it all the way. She is an elite gymnast and she has goals of going to a certain college for this. Um, now, due to some events in the prologue with a very abusive boyfriend that she has, she ends up missing out on this dream. So then you flash forward to the present day, and I believe it's the start of junior year of college, and she now gets her second chance at this school. So she is dealing with the trauma of what of what she left behind at home with her parents and her ex-boyfriend. And while she's at the college, she meets her roommate's brother, who is Kipton. And Kipton is a wrestler at the college, so they are both athletes, but he is just, he's got a hero complex, okay? And he wants to save her and wants to be there for her. Uh, like I said, this is a duet, but if you are looking for something similar to that Boys of Tommen vibe with the trauma and a guy saving the girl like that, definitely go check out this duet. And last I have What We Keep by Jennifer Milliken. This is actually a brand new release from a few weeks ago. I did receive an arc of this and I, oh gosh, this was a great story. So kind of the theme in this video is angsty tear jerkers and i'm gonna say that is probably what gets me out of slumps i they usually hit every single time for me and this story was no exception so this is going to be a second chance marriage story and we have a very interesting way that the narrative is told so the first half of the book you're gonna have our female main character avery and the chapters are going to go back and forth between her in the present day in therapy sessions and then in the past where she is telling her love story with her husband Gabriel to her therapist. Now, obviously, in the present day, they are divorced. That's why she's in therapy. And so she's telling her therapist the story of how her and her husband met and how their romance fell apart. And then when you get to part two, that is where the couple is going to try to reconcile their marriage and get back together. Like I said, this story was absolutely great. I don't want to go into a lot of details and specifics because I really think that you need to 
be surprised for a lot of things but like I said we have our female main character Avery and then we have our male main character Gabriel. Now how these two meet is through a fire. Avery is asleep in her house, it catches on fire, and Gabriel is the firefighter who rescues her and carries her out. So they literally have this epic meet-cute, quite literally. You're going to see the buildup of their epic love and then where it hit that nail to make it all fall apart. And what makes it interesting is that the male main character, Gabriel, he is the biggest cinnamon roll teddy bear hero ever and you're wondering what happened to cause their marriage to unravel now i will say this has no cheating so if that is what you are worried about if any of these two had an affair anything like that happened no there's absolutely zero cheating in this book the thing that does happen to them is a real thing that can happen it's a terrible thing that needs to be taken seriously but anyway go read this book. It is on KU. It is great. You will not regret it. All right, so that is going to do it for the romances that I have been loving so far. Like I said, I'm going to definitely try and get back into reading wrap-ups next month just because books are starting to hit a little bit more than they have been, but you know, we'll go from there. As always, don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!